Hello everybody, are you welcome for today's video on early 20th century in American literature with special focus on naturalism. I am using our favorite book, a contemporary encyclopedia of literature of the Americas as you all know. And here I have discussed all these writers that I am talking about in every day at 6. Today we will talk about naturalism. Naturalism is a movement that came as an offshoot of realism. In America, naturalism became a big movement even though naturalism began in France. All of you might have heard of Emily Zola. Emily Zola, the author of Nana, is the father of naturalism we can say. And naturalism is there a little bit even in realist novels. For example, in Tess of the Durbervilles, there is the element of naturalism. In Ibsen's plays, there is the element of naturalism. Are you are thinking, what is naturalism? Tell us that first. Naturalism is a philosophical idea that shows that human beings are products of their environment. You know, human beings are not born with a certain soul and a certain character and coming down straight from heaven. Rather, the social environment, heredity and the conditions in which they live, all these are unavoidable factors in defining human nature. Remember in the past, before the 20th century, people and writers, thinkers, they used to think human nature is universal. It is the same everywhere. That is what the Augustan age people, the neoclassical writers used to think. But naturalism shows that no, human nature is not universal. If I am behaving in a certain way, it is because of my circumstances. It is because of my heredity. It is because of my environment. And uh, in naturalist novels, usually we see a lot of uh, criminal protagonists or protagonists who are doing something and becoming social outcasts, say for example prostitutes and naturalism is not justifying them but the novel will show they are what they are because of their circumstances. Actually Tess of the Durbervilles is a pure woman but she became an adulteress she became, uh, you know, a murderess because of her circumstances. Did you understand what is naturalism? Human beings are depicted as products of their environment. Naturalism is an offshoot of realism. That means in naturalist novels, there is also realism. These are realistic novels where human beings are influenced by their environment. Now, needless to say... This idea of human nature being influenced, human nature being a construct, human nature as evolving, this is a result of Darwinism. It is because Charles Darwin showed that human beings are not, uh, you know, permanent entities. They are always evolving, changing. Did you understand? Now, there are four major writers of naturalism in America. First, Stephen Crane. Then Jack London, then Theodore Dreiser, and one more is there, Frank Norris. The first three today in this video because the first three are the major writers. Now, first we'll talk about Stephen Crane. Stephen Crane was born in 1871. Visualize in your mind, 1871, Stephen Crane. And his first novel is about a woman who lived like a destitute, very poor woman, Maggie, a girl of the streets. This is considered to be the first American naturalist work. People who are struggling, living in the streets, people who are social outcasts. Obviously, this novel is about the miserable life of Maggie and it is an indictment or attack on the society. And then came his very famous novel, 
Red Badge of Courage, 1895. <laughs> Did you know, guys? This Stephen Crane usually went and lived in extreme conditions in places in order to write novels. And this is the only novel that he did not write based on his own experience. It's purely imaginary. It is set against the American Civil War, the battle, the battle of Chancellorsville. And there is a young man, a 17 or 18 year old man called Henry Fleming. He joins the Union Army, the Union and the Confederates. These were the two parts of the uh, American army fighting in the American Civil War and Henry Fleming wants a red badge of courage of wound in order to prove himself and then he starts fighting in the army he's just a boy and he becomes scared he's a coward he becomes scared and he runs away from the army he reaches the forest in the forest at first he has very life-changing experiences he sees a decaying body. Somebody is killed and decaying. Oh. For a normal man, this is something you, he can't take. Then he sees some injured soldiers. They are all suffering so much. That also affects him deeply. Then one of his friends dies of wounds. Because of all these experiences, Henry Fleming realizes that War is gross injustice. He understands the futility and injustice of war. He becomes disillusioned. But at the end of the novel, he is finally leading a regiment. He is not injured. He doesn't get a red badge of courage. In between, he does get a wound, but that is because somebody attacked him. It was not from the war. He, at that time, he felt uh, ashamed of that wound. So this is a novel that talks very powerfully about the injustice of war. Then there is a short story that is always prescribed in universities, The Open Boat. The Open Boat is a, a 1897 short story. The protagonist is a castaway in a shipwreck and he is stranded in a dinghy. Dinghy is a small boat. It was actually based on our uh, Stephen Crane's actual experiences. He was also stranded like that. Because of the way in which he talked about war and suffering, he was much in demand as a war journalist, Stephen Crane. And then there is Theodore Dreiser. He was also born in 1871. And why Dreiser, such a uh, surname? Because he was German in origin. And he was also partly communist. He had communist leanings. There are two major novels written by Stephen Crane. They are Sister Carrie and An American Tragedy. Sister Carrie came in 1900. It is about unconventional morality and an unconventional view of morality. There is an ordinary woman, uh, Carrie Mieber. She is a... Uh, uh, going to marry a man and then he she is seduced by her friend and then she becomes almost like a prostitute not because of any uh, mistake that she herself made because men used her she became like a prostitute and then this novel is actually not showing a fallen woman this novel is going against Victorian morality and bravely boldly showing that all prostitutes are all Fallen women need not be fallen because of their own fault. Why don't you blame the men who use them? That is the story of Sister Carrie. Then there is another novel, An American Tragedy. It is a massive novel and it is centered on the trial of a man, Clyde Griffiths, who killed his girlfriend. Clyde Griffiths was an ordinary man and poor. He wanted to be rich. He had a rich industrialist uncle, but this uncle did not care for his nephew. This man gave him a job in a shirt collar factory. Uh, Clyde Griffiths got a job, but he is never allowed to enter the upper class life that he is longing for. At that time, he got a girlfriend, a poor girl, a farmer girl. And this girl gets pregnant. And then Clyde Griffiths gets to know a rich girl. 
and this girl is interested in Clyde and he can marry her. But the problem is the girlfriend who is pregnant, the poor girlfriend. He read in a newspaper about a murder that somebody else did and he got an idea. Because of his ambition, because of his inability to fulfill his dreams, what does Clyde Griffiths do? He takes his poor girlfriend, pregnant girlfriend on a boating trip, capsizes the boat, pushes her down and kills her. Makes it look like she drowned, but it was murder. And he's caught and tried and given the electric chair. But is it entirely his fault? Obviously, he's a murderer and he was punished for it. But all of you sitting there who are actually the reason for many people committing crime in the society, we perpetrate inequality. We don't do anything as a society. We don't do anything to help the poor people. You know, and then when poor people commit crime, we act like they alone should be punished for it. Whereas the society is also party to it. The society is also a party to the crime that nobody realizes. That is the story of an American tragedy. So this is not the tragedy of Clyde Griffiths. This is the tragedy of American society. Did you know that? Did you understand? I think it's an absolutely fabulous work. And then Jack London. Oh, Jack London was a man who lived a very pathetic childhood. He was the illegitimate son of an aristocratic girl. And he lived almost like a tramp. Without money, without food, he suffered a lot. So what? He wrote the most famous book that all of us know about. The Call of the Wild. I was waiting to watch the movie and then the pandemic struck. I don't even know whether the movie came out. Did you watch it? If you know something about it, please tell me in the comment box. I would love to watch it. The Call of the Wild. The story of Buck, a dog, a powerful Saint Bernard. He lived a pampered life beside the fireplace of his master. He did not have to do any work. He did not have any cares. He was protected and loved. And then one day he is kidnapped and stolen from his master, taken to the Yukon County. Yukon County is not a good place to live. There is so much snow there. So many other big, big dogs. They all bully the Saint Bernard. Poor Buck had a tough time. And then there is an animal, there is a wolf inside every dog. And then what happens is slowly he begins to be aware of his animal instincts. He gets a new master called John Thornton whom Buck loves so much. And one day Buck kills another dog in a fight, spits the lead dog he kills. John Thornton is killed by some Indians, the Yeehat Indians. And nothing can stop our buck now. He goes and kills as many Indians as he can. The Red Indians. And whenever he gets time, he goes into the forest. He meets wolves. He hears the call of the wild. He meets his own animal instincts face to face. And then, at the end, he becomes a wolf dog. He fathers wolf cubs. Imagine this petted, loved dog that he was. He is now transforming into an almost like a wolf. Hmm. And the novel ends with the wolf or the dog. We don't know whether it is wolf or dog. He is not dead. He is seen sometimes. The Indians are afraid of him. What is the meaning of the story? Follow your instincts. If your instinct is to, is to study English literature, no NT and Ed can stop you. You're not studying just for an exam. You're studying because you love books, you love stories, you love people, you want to know about them. Read books. Do your own studying. Not only for an exam, but because you love English literature. And then, your natural instincts will come out and you'll become 
a great teacher you will become a famous personality i want to read about you in the newspaper i want to watch a movie about you and i shall i i would think this is my student this person i taught in youtube this person was always there writing in the comments i want to know that i want to do that will you help me you have to tell me about two movies now one movie is call of the wild the second movie is about yourself okay i am ready to wait for some time until it is done all right wow what a dream isn't it let us dream like that together the call of the wild has a sequel that is white fang if call of the wild is about a petted pampered dog who becomes a wolf white fang is about a wild wolf dog who is domesticated he is you know becoming petted and pampered that is wolf, white fang that is the name of the protagonist now this jack london wrote many more works oh my god i have given such a long list here but you don't have to know them all if you are not interested i will tell you the names of two major works one is the sea wolf it is a psychological adventure story and then there is the star rover it is a mix of science fiction and mysticism did you understand oh jack london finally died of suicide but before that he traveled a lot he did many lecture tours he became wealthy he did not struggle in the same way all his life remember when you have sufferings at some point in life remember there will be a future where there will be no suffering you and i are working towards that glorious future okay so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you will carry out my dream fulfill my dream with that dream i'm signing off bye bye love you all